evening. I'd like to call to order the Thursday, December 19th meeting for the Berwick Planning Board. This is a regular meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, for all those uh, watching at home and here, uh, introducing our board members, we have Frank Underwood, we have Sean Winston, David Ross Lyons, who will be a regular voting member tonight, and Mike LaRue. And I'm glad I remembered all your names. Um, <laughs> we're going to open the first public comment session right now. The public comment session is open to any Berwick resident with business under the purview of the Berwick Planning Board. We do have a public hearing tonight, so if your comments or questions are regarding the conditional use application for the medical marijuana storefront, please save those for the public hearing. And with that, we're going to open the public comment session. All right, seeing no one come forward, I'm going to close the public comment session and move to the approval of minutes from the November 21st meeting. I know Frank had some changes that James made. Are you happy with those changes? Yes, I am. It adds a little more detail that I thought yeah. we should have in there as it relates to the soils concerned I, and, I agree. and classifications. So I'm glad that's in there. And, uh, and I understand we may get a memo later on from... from uh, from planning yes. regarding uh, what the chairman had asked for, what Dave yep. Andreessen had asked for. Okay. Any other changes? No, I'm good with them. Sean? No. No? Mike? No. Nope. Mr. Ross Lyons? I am good. You are good? Thank well, you. Well, then I'd be looking for a motion to approve. <coughs> I'm, I move that uh, we approve the minutes to our meeting of the 21st of November. Can a I have second. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? I'm abstaining. abstaining. Yeah, I wasn't there. Okay, one abstaining. And now we are going to, so the public hearing is still open from our last meeting. <coughs> so we're going to continue the public hearing. And um, so anybody with any questions, comments, or concerns about the conditional use application for the medical marijuana storefront at 2 Bow Street, which is in the SCI zone, Williams Greenery, LLC. Please come to the podium. State your name for our viewers at home um, and your address, please. <coughs> and, sir, you're the applicant, correct? Yeah. So you, w this is just the public hearing part, but I'll have you come up during old business. Okay. Thank you. I see you public members out there. Let's, let's <coughs> hear it. <laughs> Donald Young, I'm a resident of Bridge Street, have been for 46 years. The Planning Board is a duly constituted department of the community, the, the uh, town of Berwick, and as such, you have the responsibility for implementing the comprehensive plan and other aspects of planning for the community. You graciously permit people to come up and talk, but this is not a deli deliberative session where we can have a robust dialogue with debate. So I'll make my comments and you people can consider them, but it's up to you to make your decisions. And so we rest our case with you. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of planning and a lot of angst for the town of Berwick since the tannery closed. And they're trying to make it a better community. It's a slow process. And it comes very slowly, but it comes with time. And so it's in the best interest of the town to try and get this 
right as it moves forward. A lot of work has gone into it, and people have a lot of vision about what they want to see. But what I'm starting to see, it looks like you're opting for the first thing you can get, and it looks like you're going to have the three P's. Pizza, pawn shops, and pot. You guys can do better than that. And you ought to have the concerns of the community topmost in your minds. If you can't provide for the safety and security of people that live in the area, it shouldn't, it shouldn't go forward. And nothing can be more terrifying than to have Somebody in search of drugs break into your home or your apartment and attack you with a baseball bat. And so a review of the police department and all of the incidents that have gone on in the neighborhood because of drugs ought to be considered. And if you can clearly demonstrate that this is not a problem, fine. Otherwise, the applicant is perfectly free to go and put in an application in any subdivision that he wants to, but I don't think that would happen. The, ap the applicant has a building, wants to rent a building that has four entrances to it. I'd like to know which entrance is going to be utilized for the business. And Two of them are on Rochester Street, and there is no parking on Rochester Street. And the other entrances only have two parking spaces in front of the building in question. And there's another business in that building. So parking could be a problem. Security and uh, possible criminal activity pose another threat and the overall benefit to the community may not be that great. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for the public hearing on the medical marijuana storefront? All right, seeing nobody come up, I'm gonna close the public hearing um, for the Williams Greenery, and we are going to move on to old business now, and we can have the applicant come up to the podium and just catch us up on what, uh, what you've been up to, what you've changed. We made some requirements of you the last time you were here, and yes. maybe we can answer some of these questions that uh, came up during the public hearing. I went to Moe's to have signs made, and I had some samples that I believe you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went and got the lighting, like you asked, to make sure I've done, I believe I've done everything in my part that you folks have asked for. Sure. Can you um, answer for Mr. Young which entrance is going to be utilized on the property? The entrance will be on Rochester Street, but it'll be the front door the same as the accountant used to go okay. in. It'll be the same door used. As so the what looks like the front door to the right, house. Yes. Okay. Um, and then as yes, thank you, David. Um, and then as far as security is concerned, we actually um, James let me know that we do the police chief does review all of our um, conditional use applications. It's part of our process, um, and he reviews the security plan. We don't have the letter back from the police I chief yet. I went to him twice. Yeah. And he told me, and I told James that uh, I can't tell you what to put in for security. He says the town's people should be telling you, not me. And I didn't want to go back a third time and get him worked up yeah, with me. I've, I've talked with uh, <coughs> both Captain Mark and, and Chief Town. And, um, there's, a, there's a letter on the way. Yeah. Um, I, I reached out Monday, so I think they've um, they are aware, like you said, they've re reviewed your plan. Uh, maybe it would be helpful if you talk about 
the nuts and bolts of the security system you picked? <clears throat> I went a little bit beyond. I could have had a security system for about $2,500. And I went, had Corey come over, security, and I'm up to about 5000 so we could cover everything, every corner on the building, the windows, the doors, you know, to make sure we're right up to... Is that cameras? Is it motion sensors? What's, everything. Okay. Cameras. All right. I mean, he's asked me, when am I going to... I said, I'm, I can't talk to you until I get done. Um, so, and the, so the police chief has that security plan, and that's what he's reviewing? Mm -hmm. Yes, I give one to him. Um, questions? Uh, just to follow up on that, James, in your discussion with uh, Captain Locke or, or the chief, did they, they give any indication that they were concerned with uh, this, this type of a use in the, in the downtown? No, no, their, their concern is with the, the language in our ordinance about them having to formally approve something. They, I think they would prefer, and this is kind of a sidebar, but they would prefer the language in the ordinance to read that they reviewed it and have the opportunity to either uh, recommend uh, additions or say we have no further recommendations. Okay. Which seems fair. <clears throat> and then the only other thing I would say is that by the land use ordinance, it is an acceptable use mm -hmm. in that district. Um, it's a conditional use, so therefore it can't be denied because we don't like it or we don't agree with it. Uh, it has to. It can be approved with conditions, and I think we've tried to impose the conditions in the in the summary here that's been provided to us this evening, so. Absolutely, and, and to further clarify that, um, it, is, it, is a, it is an allowed use that the town voted on, so we don't just make up these rules and say, yeah, that can go there. The town voted on this last November. That's, it's been an approved use for over a year now. Um, the project has to comply with every applicable requirement of the ordinance, and that's our job. And then, the, as far as conditions go, we can put conditions to you know, enhance security or enhance landscape, whatever, um, they must be reasonable and directly related to the standards of review um, governing the proposal. So, you know, yeah, we can't shut something down because we don't like it or somebody doesn't like it. If it's an approved use, we go through the steps. We have uh, pages of stuff that we have to go through to make sure that it complies and that everybody is safe and secure. And again. This is something that the town voted on, so everybody had an opportunity to, to vote. Uh, are we at a point where we should be closing the hearing and then going in? I closed the hearing the already. Yep. Okay. So, Sean, do you have any questions, concerns? <coughs> that you'd like to um, no questions or concerns. Um, I know we, you know, we spent a lot of time going through these things, and I, I don't know if I, I, I made a mistake. I missed this. I personally was not. I don't think I was in favor of having this use in the village overlay, mm -hmm. but it is there. It's per the ordinances, so, you know, it meets all the standards and requirements. You know, I don't, like Nicole said, it's not my pers my personal opinion is, is differs, but this is what the ordinances are, and this is, this is what they meet, and they meet the ordinances, so. Correct. Um, the only thing I really have is to put a condition on there, the third condition to be a letter from the chief of police before a CO is issued, um, stating that the security system is up to snuff. We also have conditions um, that it shall not become an adult use storefront, so uh, recreational marijuana, and that customers shall show a photo ID upon entering the storefront. So those are the three okay. conditions that we've talked about already. Mike? Mm -hmm. Anything? Nope. David. I have a couple of things. Um, I, like the rest of the members, don't necessarily personally agree with this. However, it is part of the land use ordinance. You have, have for the most part, met the requirements. We, unfortunately, don't have a choice. Um, that being said, I do have some concerns. As far as running a medical facility, the, the access to this. There are stairs. How, how's that going to work? What do you mean is stairs? Getting into the into the building. If, if you're running a medical facility for, say, pain, lower back pain, back yep. pain, neck pain. Well, there's uh, railings on the stairs. Okay. That, you know, and everything will be, I, I, I mean, if you go in there and brick steps, railings on both sides, 
already there. Okay. And uh, some of the medical dispensaries that I personally have visited are, yeah. are much more handicapped accessible. But I was just asking some questions on that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the rules are about that. Do you? Well, I, I don't either. But I, I think you bring up a good point yeah. because the person that has the card that needs to show the ID has to physically go into the building if I'm if I yes. understand it right yeah. so that access for people that may be subject to those kind of uh, one of the requirements or one of the conditions that would warrant a medical marijuana card would be back pain yeah. or joint pains yeah I mean you did talk at one time about deliveries but you weren't certain of that is that in the cards or not I'd, I'd like to I mean I'm gonna take this slow you know you got customers that are gonna be I want to do deliveries. I want to have a buzzer, and I want to talk to the, the landlord because I'd like to put a half door when you go into the first room, and you can sit there and you can have your look at the ID and put it on the computer. And they can't come beyond that door if they don't have an ID and a medical card. They got to leave. Mm. Well, the only other thing I had was um, this use. The barbershop is occupying the first floor. This use is occupying the second floor only. Is the third floor a residential and is that being main, maintained as a residential? Uh, it's going to be just medical. So the use for residential and the use for professional space will actually lapse at the end of a year? I mean, is this to replace a use or is this to have a use in addition? The landlord. <laughs> Please step up to the microphone, Mr. Bovair. Thanks for being here, by the way. Yeah. Alex Bovair, Six Country Lane, Berwick. Uh, the building is originally a house, mm -hmm. and the third floor consists of two bedrooms. And if we, if we, this use is approved, then yes, it will have two commercial businesses in it. But certainly, the house is conducive to an in-home business also, and. I don't know exactly how the rules change when two commercial entities are in there, but you have a suitable property, which is a mixed use property. Um, I would hope that down the road, it would be able to go back to a home use property if uh, Williams Green departs and somebody else who has a suitable home business comes in there because it's very well suited for that. Uh, so I can't really speak to what happens after this lease would, would run out, but when it comes to um, the use now, there has been some talk of, uh, there was some discussion early on with potentially having uh, um, someone actually living there and running the business. And I don't know if uh, uh, Mr. Stilfen is still thinking about that or not, but I mean, I, I, I guess I don't really know how to answer the question about how, what mm -hmm. happens to the building. So is the, so right now the, you've got first floor, second floor. So I'm just trying to figure out as it stands, yeah. the third floor would not be used for anything currently. Well, I can't speak for how Mr. Stolfin's going to use the third floor, but I mean storage. Okay, the third floor is part of the second floor unit. The, the main yeah. floor of the house is where is where the applicant is is going to is going to be, and in that 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 has a, a number of large rooms. It has a kitchen. I mean, it's a house, uh, bathroom, etc. Um, and then the upstairs just has two small bedrooms. So the layout of the house is the house is seventy five percent of the house is on that main floor. The barbershop is in a very small. 400 square foot space in the bottom, and then the upstairs is also quite small. Um, by the design of the house, it's a, like a cape with a, the third floor of only the main part of the house has any space upstairs. But you'll be leasing the, the, the middle floor and the upper floor as yes, part yeah, of this as the, part of this use. Okay. The use, which was uh, previously a in-home business. I, I realize that. Yeah, I, I, I knew that, that section. Code yeah. officer has something to add. So you, so you can definitely rent out an apartment in a building that there's a medical marijuana facility. We can't prevent you, him from doing that, you from doing that. Um, there's a couple questions that I do have, though, if you're going to do that. Um, I guess I would ask what the access would be inside the building to get over to his storefront. So that would be one. And my other question is, I'm just going to ask both. They're not related, um, just so that you have time. Um, the front door access door, is there um, any, mm, how do I want to say this? Is there any um, thing in the plan to put bulletproof glass on that door? I'll speak to the first uh, 
I, the house is not suitable for adding another unit. The only okay. way the house would be suitable as a, to have residential in there with this use would be if the person who was living there was running the business. It's not, it's not laid out in any way that you right. rent another unit out of the house. Is there an inside staircase leading from the barber shop to the upstairs level? There is, which is locked. Okay. Yep. And so there, that, there's no access between those two, no free access between those two. Okay. And then there's another stairway that goes from the main floor to the third floor bedrooms or second floor bedrooms, whatever you want to, whatever you like to call it. I was very ignorant on this subject up until a couple weeks ago, and I've been doing a little bit of research on it. And I really think that your tenant should consider putting bulletproof glass on the front door, the entrance door of his marijuana facility. I can't, I guess um, I can, <laughs> I can't speak to him, but certainly uh, from a landlord's perspective um, and a uh, and for the applicant, I'd like to see if that's a precedent or if that's just a new thing, because I'm not sure, you know, if we get to do that wherever we, want, wherever we want to do it. I'm not sure if it's a state law. Yeah. It's in a lot of buildings, so I'm not really sure yeah. where that I, lies. I don't know. So, yeah. Any other questions for me? Well, not, not of you, but just maybe one more. I, I, I know that you made the comment that your daughter was going to school in Maryland to become a pharmacist well, we're talking about that. please step up to the mic please. yeah my only question is is if it ever comes around that it becomes a requirement that medical marijuana dispensaries be uh, run by a licensed um, pharmacist in that area of practice um, does the state require that you do that or is that going to be a it hasn't condition that far yet this college just started and there's quite a waiting list for it right now. And uh, when she graduates, she got one more semester. We've been talking about her going to school to go to Maryland for a two-year term on this, on the medical. So that, you know, I'm just trying to follow well, all the steps. Yeah, yeah and we're trying to learn, too, as yeah. we go and follow all the steps as they come into play. So I'm just wondering whether or not there should be a condition in there that we end up that he must comply with any of those rules and regulations. Well, I think he's going to have to comply with forward. state laws. Yeah, yeah. every every yeah. year he's going to have to renew for his yeah. licenses, so he's yeah. going to have to license, comply every the, year. I think the license will take care of that. Yeah. Okay, just yeah. the, because yeah. of that, if that's a requirement, I want right. to make sure that's imposed yeah. on him. Yeah. Yeah. But Absolutely. it's coming from the state level. Yep. You're saying well, yes. We'll have local licensing, for right? June 2020, we'll have local, local licensing as well. Okay. Okay. David? Clarification, I'm sorry. Your daughter is in the program, you're talking about the program, or been accept I'm, I'm a little confused how that's... She's in college right now, yep. USM. And we've been talking about when she graduates, maybe taking, going, going to, uh, when she told me this today, there's quite a wait, waiting list right okay. now. So she, it might take her another year or longer to even get into the school. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I just, I was a little confused. I just wanted some yep. clarification. Thank you. Mike? I'm good. So are you guys all good? The only thing I had was, you didn't pick it up. It says no orders will be omitted. I think it says no orders will be emitted. Oh. It won't be orders, everything. <laughs> that's, that's, that's James, and you're right, I didn't pick it up. That's Frank. <laughs> no, no, that's from, that's from Paul. Paul told oh, me that's to okay. correct that typo in there, just so that you know. <laughs> Paul's got to have one typo. He's here. all good. He's very good with typos. Has everybody had a chance to review the findings of fact? These are different than the ones that were emailed to us. They were a little bit updated. And is everybody comfortable with them or want any changes? That's quite the typo. Please change <laughs> that, James. Where's that one? It's right here. <laughs> That's funny. Good job, Paul. Yeah, thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm looking for a motion to approve the findings of fact. I'll make a motion that we approve the finding of facts for the William Greenery LLC application for conditional use at 2 Bow Street um, for medical marijuana dispensary. Second? I'll second. All in favor? And that is subject to the conditions. That yes, yeah, so the, um, so the approval of the conditions, the conditions that we have are, um, number one, the conditional use shall not become an adult use storefront Number two, customers shall show photo ID upon entering the storefront. 
And number three, a letter from the chief of police will be um, issued before the CO is issued. And our code enforcement officer will enforce that for us. So can I get a motion to approve the conditions of approval? I'll make a motion that we approve the, uh, the three conditions that we have on the uh, findings of fact. Thank you, Sean. Can I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Five zero. Um, and then finally, we need a motion to approve the application. I'll move that we approve the application for William Greenery LLC um, for the uh, Two Bow Street uh, use. I will second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? And that's 5 0. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Moving on, we have no new business, so we will move to our second public comment session. Again, any uh, resident of the town of Berwick with any business under the purview of the Berwick Planning Board, feel free to come up to the podium. Please state your name and address for the audience at home. All right, seeing nobody come up, I'm going to close the public comment session. Any informational items? I've got something. Uh All right. Our critical dates are coming up faster than uh, I'm ever ready for, really, um, which means uh, land use ordinance amendments will start kind of like January 2nd will be the intro, and then over the course of January and early February, we'll revise them, and we can do our public hearing uh, February 20th. So that's about basically when they're finalized. So if you have ideas, now's the time to start thinking about them. Um, something I... And thinking it, we're about the point where I think it makes sense to start putting a cap on the, the marijuana establishments in Berwick um, and we can continue that we can have a dialogue about that um, over the over the course of January um, and then um, just off the top of my head simplifying our owner occupied apartment ordinance which is accessory dwelling units it's kind of a hot topic and uh, in planning. No, it's not. <laughs> on, the, on the cap, James, could you do a little bit of research and find out what other towns our size are capping at, if they are in fact capping it, or maybe what the larger cities are capping it at? And we're talking about doing it by zone also. I, I, I realize that, yeah. but I mean, yeah. the yeah. idea is that we might have a small zone and put three times as many right. in there that right. somebody yeah. else has got a population. Well, basically, my, my suggestion to you, you folks is that the number of establishments who are basically in, that that's the number. And if anyone else wants to come in, someone has to leave. Not something to consider, and I'm sure the public will weigh in on that at the public. Yeah, it'll be. It's that. part of a. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's part of an extended discussion we'll have throughout January. Okay. And then the only other comment I have of James would be: is James attended a national Brownsville conference? Did you pick up any tidbits of information or things along the line that the planning board should be aware of and can be considering to incorporate into our ordinance? that might just supplement Brownsfield's programs? Um, or you, you just, or just look into that yeah, if you Yeah, I can't would. think of anything from a zoning perspective, but um, I mean, one, one thing that I learned that was inspiring, there's uh, tons of projects out there that were done on, on LA-sized landfills, and they turned them into amazing projects. So there's other Brownfields out there in Berwick that we can go and turn them into successful projects. So. Looking, I'll, I'll, I'll think about zoning things from a Brownfield's perspective. Another yeah, just, I mean, we should, because, I mean, we got... We're experts on it now. Well, we're on the, <laughs> we're we're on run the with curve, it. so... <laughs> Anything else, anybody? Was there any uh, more information that came out of the last, the second listening session with Great Falls? Oh, um, have, did you listen to the second session? I did not get a chance to see That's that. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good one. Um, that was uh, yeah. a pretty lively discussion. That's good. Um, you can s skip the uh, the questions part because the facilitator kind of boils them down, and it starts about half hour to forty five minutes into the video, and it's it's really it's pretty informative. Yeah, um, it was a good exchange. Of I watched it on vacation, and I was entertained by it. So, so they <laughs> they're picking their engineer firm this week, 
they had about 10 to 15 engineer firms pr uh, submit RFPs. So they're picking that. And then once they pick the <laughs> engineer, they're going to start picking their team of architects. And then I think they'll start developing their concepts. And uh, they've, already, they've already scheduled listening sessions for February, April, and June. And I'll get those dates out on the website. Can you also inform people at home how long the engineer process takes? Oh, yeah. They're getting calls about it. I mean, the, the, the planning process. Why aren't they building anything yet? Let's do this right now. <laughs> the, the planning process is probably a year-long process, and the good news is that process has already started. Yeah. Good. Yeah, he, he spoke to that. John, uh, he, he did speak that night, and he did say it would be a year out before they really get because they got a year's of engineering and There's a small, there's a small chance if they can carve out a small project that meets with our ordinance, but our ordinance is pretty specific <laughs> in saying you got to master plan the whole site. Yeah. Um, but they might they, there's a they own a duplex that they can they can rehab by right. Yeah. So that might be one of their first projects. So and I guess would, I'd like to know along the way yeah. as they are master planning this thing that we don't see it in the eleventh hour. I think we talked about that communication well, component. That's they, they scheduled. They'll be back in February. They've already scheduled it. February, April, and June. So they may have working documents at those points in time to show how it's being considered, progressed, yeah, decided. Okay. Right. They're probably going to be looking at like the beginning stages of any kind of plan five to six months out from now. Okay. And they were they said that as they come back, they'll just share that information with everybody. But that's how long it's going to take for just the beginning mm -hmm. set of plans that they're going to do. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you all for being here tonight because we don't normally have to have a meeting on the third, fr uh, third Thursday in December, but we voted to have this meeting because we got paid extra to be here. <laughs> Double. <laughs> double, double, yeah, we got paid double. They doubled <laughs> our pay for today, so we were like, we might as well do this. Um, can I get a motion for adjournment? <laughs> High motion that we adjourn this evening's December 19th meeting, the last meeting of 2019. Wow. Second. second. All in favor? <laughs>